Well, hi. Hi, Monica. Hi, Emily. Thank you so much for doing this with me today. Thank you for doing this. I'm so excited to do a little mini MB Beauty makeover on you. Not that you need one. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I do need one. <laughs> no, not at all. Well, I'm going to just start with putting a little bit of our undercover moisturizer on you. I'm really excited. First of all, we go way back, don't we? We go way, way back. I mean, like decades. Decades. I know. I used to work with you when you were not even owning a brand. Probably not this brand. Um, we might have just sold maybe our first brand. Yeah. Yeah. Can you but tell us about what was the name of the first Current brand? Elliot. Current yeah. Elliot. I mean, we. So I started as a stylist. Yeah. Well, that's um, how we met first. That's how we met. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and we continued styling and for you know up until actually like a couple years ago. Yeah. And I, we still do special projects, but yeah. for the most part. We are focusing on our brand, yeah. but um, but yeah, we we met styling back yeah. in the day when Mer my business partner Merritt and I started our styling business right outside of college, yeah, and um, right after college, and we've worked together ever since, yeah. and we've built multiple brands together, multiple projects. Merritt is a wonderful for anyone who is listening right now. Merritt is Emily's business partner, who is you guys just from the outside looking in you guys look like the most beautiful partners like yesterday i went down a rabbit hole on your instagram because i wanted to see some of your looks you've done lately and i just like there were so many photos of you guys together and it just feels so um inspirational to look at your photos oh, thank you Monica. it really does i mean i think it's our our biggest accomplishment honestly that we've been able to work together now for so long and through yeah. so many different projects and through so many different versions of ourselves and phases of life. I'm really quickly, I'm using yeah. blender cover. I just did a little bit of face oil and now I'm going in with blender cover and shade too. Perfect. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, and we, I mean, it's just incredible. Like we collaborate so well and there's so many partnerships and business partnerships and, you know, even in our friend groups, there's a lot of business partnerships, yeah. but I have to say, ours is really long-lasting yes, and unwavering. Amazing, what you guys have built together. It can be challenging at times too, because you have different opinions and you know things like that. But it's also so helpful to have a second person who you can rely on. Oh and yeah, I mean, I actually love when we have different opinions, and um, it, you know, it's like that's how we get to the best place. To be honest, is when yeah. we kind of try to problem solve through different opinions on things and and find a way that we both are happy with it means yeah. it'll be even more democratic towards like a customer or we have very different body types for example so yeah. like for clothes if we both can wear it and it both fits well and she's tall I'm short like there's just it's incredible. It's like it's just really wonderful to have a sounding board and somebody to bounce things off of. Yeah, and yeah. then it's not all on you, yeah. right? I know. I yeah. absolutely one thousand percent agree on that. And then after current Elliot, you guys decided on starting. Yeah, the yeah we great. took a little break. We were both pregnant when we sold our first brand, and um, we did a bunch of different projects after that. We started working on a home project with William Sonoma Group and Pottery Barn. That. It was beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. And then we worked on a book with Rizzoli about denim and the history of denim and how denim has inspired us. Um, and then we started The Great, which was... We you, knew... What year was It was that? 2000 and, and... Let's see. 15? Really? 2015? So that really is... I mean, it's almost a decade. I know. Yeah. Nine know, years. Nine years. That's and when we started working on the project. It didn't launch that year, but that's when we started working on it. And we just had more. We wanted to do more. Yeah, we weren't yeah. done. Yeah, you knew you weren't done. Yeah, exactly. we knew we weren't done. And we what we we knew we had to work on, you know, putting our point of view back into the market. But also, I think we just wanted the challenge of creating a business that that was the way we wanted to do business. Yes. And we had kind of been through business school the few years before that working with a different projects and different things and i just i felt like we were ready to try to do it our own way which was really challenging yeah really challenging. especially in a very male dominated field you're in especially in the clothing business oh, yeah. right yes that leads me to my next question which i wanted to ask you what has it been uh, being a female run and own business in a male dominated field, how do you stay true to your morals and values? 
I mean, it's a great question. And manufacturing in Los Angeles it was generally a male-dominated industry. Yeah. And, what, you know, from who funds companies to yeah. who runs the factories to how this, you know, who factors their business, it's generally run by men. But I will say we've been in the business now for a long time, and I have seen such a shift to so many female founders and so many female-run businesses. Yeah female CEOs, female factory owners, like it has shifted quite a bit. It has, right? Yeah, it really has. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't, I mean, we are female founders and I really identify with that, but I also just identify that we're founders and yeah. found, it's really hard to be an entrepreneur. It's it really, really hard is. to be a founder. People don't realize, they all, all, always see the glitz, right? Yeah. Like how great it is to have a company and you see it on Instagram, it all looks so rosy, but like the everyday grind, yeah. And I always say it's like a huge puzzle, yeah. you know, and every day you're trying to like connect the puzzle and there's just so many, I mean, for me with, with makeup, there's just so many like little issues we have to get through, you know what yeah. I mean? But it's also so rewarding. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, it's wonderful. And clearly like we've done it more than once. So we have the bug and we love it, but it's not easy. Like there's not, it doesn't end at five. You know, you don't necessarily have weekends off. It's it never really ends, yeah. and um, but it's it's incredible. Like yeah. I mean, I get we get to work together this way. We get to work together. Um, we get to build something that we believe in, and um, I think you know, in terms of our morals and what we believe in, like we wanted to create a company culture that was what we wanted, which was joy. And if we, yeah. we felt like if there was a joyful community of people working together to build something that the customer would feel the joy yeah. and they would feel the inspiration and they would feel that heart went into what we were creating. Yeah. And our goal was to make as much as we could here in Los Angeles, yeah. which was even easier the year we started than it is now. There's not as many factories here. And, uh, but we do our best and all of our knits and like almost 70% of our volume is produced here that. in Los Angeles. So fantastic. Yeah. And I it's, love that. it's really incredible to support these family owned businesses. Yeah. And you get also that vibe on your Instagram too, like a lot of nature, like, yeah, I, I just get that like really holistic vibe as well, which I think is so beautiful. You know? Thank you. I mean, the nature part's actually interesting because I grew, I grew up in Northern California in a small town called Davis, and Merritt tell. grew up in Northern California in a different town. We actually didn't meet till college, but so much of our, our youth was spent outdoors. And, and you can feel that. Yeah. You can feel it in your vibe. Like, I'm from Austria, and I'm very connected to that as well, so I just, I just see that in you guys. Oh, and it makes you. sense that you then choose to, as an example, produce in Los Angeles, right? And yeah, I mean, keeping things that. local keeps yeah. things easier, you know, we're yeah. not traveling them all over. And, and we don't only produce in LA, obviously, there's like a lot of incredible of factories course. all over the world, but we do our best to keep what we do, what gets produced the best in Los Angeles, in like Los Angeles, knitwear, knitwear denim, um, twills, things like that. So okay. yeah, and, and speaking of the outdoors, last year, we launched our outdoors, the great outdoors, because we spent so much time throughout COVID hiking and, and camping and going I outdoors see. together. And a lot of our work meetings were just hiking the canyons Amazing. instead of being in an office. And we felt like we should create an outdoors line because getting outdoors and being comfortable and having technical clothing was meaningful to us yeah. and having a lot of pockets and having a hat and all the things that we needed to be outdoors. So. The outdoors is one of our biggest inspirations. I mean, and yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I love that. I love that about your brand. Um, just really quickly, what I've done so far. So, I really just used shade two, kind of like all over, and I used uh, our hybrid brush, and then I blended it out with the angle brush, and I also did a little tiny little contour on you. Oh, I like. I used the shade six to five, and I just kind of like went into the hollows of your cheeks. Right here, I also put it a little bit on your temple, a little bit on your forehead, and I also put it into your eyes, and I kind of lifted it outwards a little bit. And what that does is it's almost like contouring your eye. You know, it just like you you have very similar eyes to me, you have very deep set eyes. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring your eyes a little bit forward. And the way how I did that is I just used a darker shade, kind of like in the socket of your eye, right in here and on the outer corner. 
and then I sort of like just lift it outwards and upwards and it gives you like it brings your eye forward and also gives you a little bit of a lift it's a nice little way of um, or a nice little trick to enhance your eye shape and what's so nice about blender cover like you see I'm using just a darker shade for the contour so you don't need to buy all this extra yeah. products you know what I mean especially if you're also traveling on the go it's nice you can just use two shades what shade is this one this is 625 okay yeah this I use that color too it's a really beautiful contouring shade because it's more neutral so pretty it doesn't have so it like looks really good but you don't want too much red in your contour you want it to be a little bit more neutral brown so that works really well on you and you told me earlier off camera that you have a little bit of rosacea and so what's really nice about blender cover is it it does have such healing ingredients it has uh, arnica and edelweiss and the arnica is wonderful for someone who does suffer from a little bit of rosacea because it calms down your skin and it takes care of the redness we'll do a little bit of mascara I'm going to actually use a shade brown on you today. Have, okay. you, have you done brown mascara before? Yeah, I have. I don't often, but I love it. Yeah. It feels like natural, and then yeah. I have blue-green eyes, yeah. and so it really pops. I think it's going to pop your yeah. eyes. I'm excited. And they're actually really nicely curled. Normally, I would use a curler, but I feel like we don't need to. Okay. So I'm going to just put I don't it usually curl my lashes. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Back to how we met, I remember, you know, obviously it's been now, I don't know, two two decades that I know you. We, we met when you were a stylist, but we did have one client together that I remember vividly that we worked together for many years was Jessica Alba, which was amazing. We've done so many great looks with her together. And... I think we worked for like two or three years yeah, together with her, right? Definitely, yeah. Did we travel too? I believe. I mean, we've traveled. I'm sure. We have. And all right? over with Jess. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, was that sort of like your last client? That's a great question. I pretty much. I mean, we still do special projects that are a little bit more advertising based, or. Um, you know, additional styling and consulting projects. But Jessica was our last client. Yeah. And we worked till the bitter end there because you it was really like did. we were trying to juggle the business growing really yeah. quickly and fittings and traveling. And, you know, the th amazing thing about Jessica, which I know you know, is that she is a incredible entrepreneur. Well, and that was also sort of like the time when she started honest. And I don't know about you, but I learned so much from so her. So much just being around her building honest and it was so inspiring being around it you know what I mean that entrepreneurial um, bug she had and she was just so good and so inspirational so inspirational yeah. I mean she inspired so much for us and was so supportive of us and actually towards the end was like you guys how can you do two jobs yeah. I mean she really understood and helped us navigate yeah and the that. reason why I ask you this question because you know you're obviously so much further than where I am at Monica Blender Beauty is only three years old and you're going into your 10th year but it is a struggle for me too and a lot of people are asking me why don't you work as much anymore as a me and I still work as a makeup artist but it is a juggle to do both it and is the quicker and the faster the brand is growing I feel like it's so hard to be away from it. So, but I still love, I mean, this is my joy. Just like today doing your makeup. This is like, this is like my love. You know what I mean? I mean, I feel the same way about styling. Yeah. I really do. And I mean, Merit and I laugh about it a lot. Like I, there's some days where I wish I was doing a styling job. Like I really love it. It's in my bones. I mean, I definitely get to style. We style all the ad campaigns and all of the lookbooks and everything for the yeah. brand. And and, and then, even you just style me outside <laughs> exactly. of armor. And it's like the way how you do it, you're just so good at it. You know what I mean? Thank you. And, and I love it. And it's fun, isn't it? It's like being creative. It's, it's the and best. And you need that. And I think to do that in order that helps your brand and it keeps you young and it keeps you fresh. You know what I mean? You I have agree. to still, I feel like you still have to have a little bit of that in you because I feel like for me with makeup, like that's where I get my inspiration from. Definitely. I mean, I think the reason, and we've we've started multiple brands, but I think the reason that we've been able to and 
and meet the market where it needed to be met was because we were stylists and because we had to shop the market and we were pulling dresses from runway. We were out shopping all the time. We saw what people were doing and what people were not doing and where we thought there were white spaces that we could fill. So still to this day, you know, I, I get out there and I try to see what's happening in the world. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm really grateful for incredible clients like Jessica. And we had other long-term clients like Mandy Moore and Emma Roberts who've just been oh, still Mandy Moore, so... Mandy we did together that's too. True. I forgot so about that. So supportive still of the great yes. and really have been brand champions and, and you know, really been such wonderful friends to us even yeah. post-styling. Personally, I struggle sometimes getting dressed in the morning. And I just want to know your thought process when you open the closet, like... What, how do you get dressed in the morning? Like, what is your sort of like way to get dressed? So I just need to say this out loud. Yeah. I love clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the idea that you can wake up every morning and like put on a personality yeah. or a mood or a so feeling true. or you could be inspired by something you saw the day before. You could just wake up feeling like you want to be in head to toe denim. Like I, I, yeah. I sometimes I worry there's not enough days for how many outfits I want to try to wear because I love it. I think it's such an expression of who you are, of who you are and who, and that's ever changing, you yes. know? And if you're blue one day, maybe you're in all black or maybe that's the day you wear red lipstick or, or right. a really bright color. And I just, I feel like there's such a counterpoint between how I'm feeling and what I'm wearing and like yes so I, I really feel inspired every day getting ready and Amazing. and it feels like styling really yes you know like when we were working with an artist or a musical artist or something we were yeah. helping them perpetuate an album or a vibe or a feeling yeah. or how they wanted to evolve as an artist and I sort of feel like that for myself in yes. the morning like am I classic today am I Miami Vice today, am I? Well, it comes across because I just like love the way how you dress. Oh, thank you. I really do. I mean, I, and some also days are, they're not always wins. Yes. I just need to say, of I think course. that there's a fearlessness to having personal style and wearing something really big or wearing something really small or pairing prints together yeah. or putting on like loafers with a dress instead of ballet flats. Like, I think it's fun to play. And I get a team mood, right? You're not yeah. always in a great mood every day. So you're allowed to wear something moody. Or... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I definitely love getting dressed in the morning. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, there are days where I try on 60 things and there's a pile on the yeah. floor. I do and the And then same. there's days where I'm out where the door in three minutes. Smooth, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I totally agree. I want one more thing. I'm going to just, uh, as a makeup tip, I'm going to, walk you guys through um so right now we just by the way the brown mascara yeah. you are going to love it it's going to become your new favorite thing Perfect. because you know it's not just your typical brown mascara put a lot of thought into the actual color brown and you will understand this because you understand color there brown is not just brown so it's really important for a brown mascara to have the right undertone so this brown is a more neutral like a kind of like, yeah, neutral brown, which is important because if it's too much red again in the mascara, it it's not good on your eyes because it kind of makes you look tired. So the brown shade is perfect and it brings out sort of like the, your eyes are blue or green, I can't even tell. They it's change like, colors. Change colors. Yeah. So right now they're like aqua blue. It's amazing. Oh, so amazing. it really brought out the color. But one thing I like to do, and I the whole idea of Monica Blender Beauty and all the products, I want you to be able to use them in multi-functional ways. And it's the same even with a mascara. If you are you know, on vacation or you're in the car doing your makeup and you say, oh, I forgot my eyeliner as an example. Like one thing I love to do is I take an angled brush, something like this, and I dip it into the mascara wand and pick up some of the brown. And I'm using that as my eyeliner. I've never and thought of that. And it's like, ever and it's crazy ever. how well it stays on. It like doesn't smudge. Wow. And yeah, I love doing it. So close What a eye. great tip. It's such a great little tip and try not to blink and I'm just putting it really really close to your lash line and I think for you I mean you're very similar to me you don't wear a lot of eye makeup um, I think you're gonna really like this 
and I promise you, you can do this yourself. I was gonna say, liner is hard to do on yourself. Look how good this looks. So um, I'm gonna show you a mirror, just so you see the difference. You can fold it up. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. And you put it, did you put it towards like the middle to the end? Yeah, I'm gonna actually go a little bit now in the inner corner, so I haven't done pretty. that part yet, but I'm gonna do it really thin. So if you look this way. Look which way? Down? That, yeah, that way. And then leave it open? Yeah, leave it open. Just going to bring it in the inner corner really thin. And then I work my way outwards. If you look at me this way, down. And then I'm going to give you just a little mini, mini baby wing on the outer corner. Is this something I could just do day to day? Like day to day. Love. And you will be surprised. You will love the way how this stays on because a lot of times with liners or cool liners they they're very they kind of melt away and they melt away you will not believe how long this will stay on pretty it pops and it really pops on you yeah have you tried our um blushes yet no okay i'm a i love my blush person. people love these blushers so i put one in your gift bag so too. like for me can i wear what can i wear any color blush I like, mean, can I wear pink? Can I wear peach? I can like I wear a, rose? Like, I, or is there like a no-no for me? I mean, you do have the rosacea, right? So you do have already like the redness in your skin. So I'm going to keep it more on the lighter side. And I'm going to do like a light pink for you. Okay. I think that's a really pretty color for you. Okay. And this here is shade München, which I think you're going to really love. And I'm just adding that a little bit on your cheekbone. Yeah. And the, it's liquid, so it's not your typical cream blush. I mean, it's a cream blush, but it's a liquid form. So I want to see where you're putting it on. I'm putting it on the high point of your cheek. Okay. And then I'm using that same brush, and I'm just sort of like, I'm bringing it upwards and outwards, just for a little pop. Just like that. That color is great on you. And you can even close, put the leftover on the brush. I sometimes bring into the eye makeup. Pretty. Because it kind of just like ties everything together. That's so nice. I'm going to do a tiny little bit of pressed powder for you just in the T-zone. Okay. You, you do have a little bit more on the oilier side in your T-zone, so we're gonna just powder a little bit right there and leave the rest glowy. And I'm gonna put a little of the powder underneath her eyes to set the blender cover. This is something I should have done earlier when I did her, your skincare. These are our lip tints, which are amazing. They're really nourishing on the lip. And I like usually doing that and then do the makeup because it has time to soak in. And because I'm doing a red lip on you today, it's nice to have the lips really nicely nourished. But I forgot, so I'm doing it now. <laughs> and then I'm just going to let this sit for a minute. and. I, this would be great for you, by the way. I, I like this look just, you know, if you're not doing lipstick, I yeah. love that. Um, but I want to do a lipstick on you because I, <laughs> this is like your signature and I've known you for so many years. And Emily looks amazing with a orangey red and I happen to have the perfect um, red for her, which is our um, oh, wow. Charlotte. This is so perfect. I love this color. She and especially with the yellow together. I just love an orangey red. I wanted to just ask you one more thing about beauty. What is your relationship to beauty and what does beauty mean to you? Well, I mean, I think beauty if what what you imagine beauty is or what you consider beauty to be changes and evolves as you get older. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, because I mean, what I find beautiful right now is when people are fully themselves, yeah. like fully embodied in themselves and so confident and yeah. so calm and so themselves. And like that can show up in so many ways, just in kindness and how they present themselves. And so beauty to me is really that. But, but in terms of like beauty, I love, I love participating in yeah. beauty. Like I love the, the idea that it's sort of like clothes where you can dress up and try on different personalities and yeah. try different things. Yes. So, yeah. Beautifully said. <laughs> I couldn't, I mean, I agree 100% the same way. 
All right, this is the shade Charlotte. And I'm just applying it out of the lipstick bullet directly because it's designed like a crayon. And you can almost first draw it on like a lip liner. And then I fill the lip in. And with that, that this is a clean formulation, it actually gives you a really beautiful color payoff. And you can layer it a couple of times for more pigment. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm just starting off one layer, kind of like the side on the shape of your lip. And then I go back in and do another layer. And this is your color. And look how this brings out the color of your eyes. It's incredible. I just feel like when I put on a lip, like everything comes alive. Right? Like even if I'm wearing like sweats, I'm like, let's That's go exactly for right. it. <laughs> it, it. Like you, 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 it's crazy what a lipstick can do to yeah. you. It's, it's insane. Like it's the one thing that's always in my purse. Right. And also because you and I actually, I wear my makeup the exact same way than you do. I'm very actually minimalistic with my makeup. And again, with a lipstick, it just feels like I'm dressed now. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's also great when you're on vacation or when also when you don't really know how to do makeup as well, mm -hmm. because this is easy and everyone can apply lipstick. So, and you, you look pulled together. So I don't have the matching lip liner for this, but I'm just using a more neutral color. I like to always sharpen first. And then what I'm doing with this shade Renee is just kind of like outlining where I want the line to be. And then I go over with the lipstick to match the color. This just kind of like helps me shape the lip. And then I go back with the actual lipstick. And I like to just, I'm not a big fan of overdrawing the lips, but I like to overdraw the cupid's bow just a touch. And then I need to get into that corner right there. When I don't do a red, red lip, let's just say, what um, other tones would look good on me? That's interesting that because, like I said, I went on a rabbit hole on your Instagram yesterday because <laughs> I wanted to make sure, you know, I, I like to prep before I do someone's makeup and just kind of like see their looks and see what I could do different and better or, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. So obviously this is your look, the, the mm -hmm. orangey red which i love on you but honestly what we just did before i brought you these as gifts our lip tints which this one is actually your color the one i used earlier is just a clear shade but something like that like i think it's all about the, the textures and the consistency in makeup mm -hmm. this is a more opaque and heavier but i love something a bit more sheer for you too so the lip tints are amazing it's pretty. because see how sheer it is it still gives you a little bit of color yeah and um it's really relaxed when you it's it's the same with clothes you mm -hmm. know with makeup it's like this is like your loose pair of jeans mm -hmm. this is on your like days when you're not wearing that much makeup and you just want a little bit of something on your lips so this is perfect so for pretty. you it's like a punchy kind of corally yeah. red yeah, yeah i so gave pretty. you that as in, in your gift bag but i also think like a really pretty like petally pink something okay. like a rosy pink would be so pretty on you okay and that's something i never see you in i know i don't yeah. i think i get confused with all the nude lipsticks that a lot of them look really brown yeah. on me and I don't know what the right... I have one color here. I'm going to give... I, I didn't put that in your gift bag, but I'm going to give it to you. And you can test it out and see how you like it. But I think that might be like the perfect pink for you. When I was designing the lipstick colors too, or in general, all the products, because, you know, you create one product, but then you need multiple shades, right? Mm -hmm. So me as a makeup artist because i have worked for so many years as a makeup artist and i've worked with so many different brands and my goal was to create the perfect shades but lesser first of all it's better for the environment not to overproduce and i wanted 
someone like you who really doesn't you know know all the colors to go to my shade range and be like you know what i can find my perfect red in that shade range because mm -hmm. sometimes you see 50 lipstick colors and they all sort of look the same and you get overwhelmed and that was sort of like my goal to create less but just really, edit it but edit it yeah. version curated exactly um my last question for you, which I, I have been asking everyone so far, is when do you feel the most beautiful? And that's sort of like our end yeah. of our question. I feel the most beautiful after like a day with my family and I've had like a pretty active day and it's maybe like summery and it's the end of the day and the sun's going down and we get to relax. Like, yeah. just the, the, I just feel really relaxed and happy, and that makes me feel beautiful. Really well said. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, Emily, I feel like this is my perfect version of a Emily makeup look, and I'm so happy I was able to do your makeup today. You look absolutely beautiful. Thank you for teaching me and also doing such a beautiful job on my makeup. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. <laughs>